Africa, especially sub-Saharan Africa, risks having a malaria epidemic alongside COVID-19 if routine interventions are halted, paused, or slowed. A team of researchers from Imperial College here in London have mathematically modeled scenarios for the COVID-19 epidemic that will determine the period of malaria service interruption. The worst case scenario is that uh, if uh, bed net distribution doesn't happen and, uh, and also treatment stops, uh, then we would expect about five times more malaria deaths this year than we had last year. You know, that would be clearly terrible. If we manage to get uh, some level of treatment, so perhaps treatment is reduced by half, but we don't distribute bed nets, then we're still looking about four times as many uh, malaria deaths as in previous years. In your research, you say mosquito net distribution could help help the number of deaths from malaria. What numbers are we looking at? In Uganda alone, if you uh, have six months delay for bed net distribution campaign, you might have up to uh, 70,000 uh, deaths due to malaria. Now, if you imagine to uh, get your bed nets out, and even if treatment is stopped, then you can reduce that down to an additional 22,000 malaria deaths. The projections are correct. Even without uh, projection just from logic and common sense, uh, we knew we are going to have a very bad situation. But we took some action to try and keep this at, at bay. Uh, but it is tough. We are affected possibly now by logistics. We have nets stuck at Mombasa. Not lack of trucks, this time lack of drivers. Wow. Because drivers are either waiting for COVID test result or they're positive. Dr. Pico fears the next batch of nets may appear in December and these may not be distributed. Yet there are also fears of political tensions growing. But the team continues to vigorously campaign for continuity. I think it really does reflect fantastic leadership from both the Malaria Control Programme and from the Ministry of Health. The ability to carry out a campaign of that size. And the WHO modelling was done for specific countries. For Uganda, um, it was a really big uh, number in terms of there could have been a more than 200% increase in deaths. And that's because of the central importance of the mosquito net campaign. Now, the researchers are advising that if the age could be increased up to like 15 years with regard to children who present with fever and there is no testing, they should be treated for malaria, presumptively. If it's in the malaria the transmission season, there's a high chance that, that fever might be from malaria. So, you know, ideally people should continue testing and treating as they are. But if you don't have the diagnostics, just treating cases of fever will really help reduce your malaria burden. Consistent studies, even in Uganda, have shown that now malaria is instead peaking in uh, 9, 10 and 12 year old. Especially the people in, uh, in the cities where malaria is low, the affluent children. Actually, of late, we are losing a lot of 12-year-olds from severe malaria. Meanwhile, epidemiologists warned of a new threat of mosquitoes, the Anopheles stevensi. It was first reported in Djibouti in 2012, um, and then Ethiopia in 2016, and most recently in the Republic of South Sudan in 2019. Um, the, this geographical spread is a concern, but there is a window of opportunity when we can, if we can aggressively control and wipe out this mosquito whilst its geographical range is still limited. Unlike Anopheles gambi, which is the main vector in Uganda, um, Anopheles gambi doesn't thrive in urban environments, but Anopheles stevensi is adapted to city living. And it's adapted to breeding in human-made water, in car tyres, in water jugs. So if slums uh, develop because of urbanisation, first transmission will be effective because people are very close to each other. Oh, yeah. You know how slums are. One mosquito can move to various people very easily. And then again, our public health system was designed to be rural public health system. For example, village health teams, volunteers. Who is going to be a volunteer in a city where everything is a cast economy? Larval control, mosquito control by covering water vessels, which requires behavior change communication, um, larval control using insecticides, um, making sure there's environmental management so that water isn't standing still. There are also genetic techniques that have been developed that appear to be successful um, and targeting this mosquito in particular. But of course, genetic techniques haven't been widely tried. What are your thoughts on mass treatment over net usage, especially in areas with high transmission rates? Would it be better to destroy the parasite that's in someone's body so that when the mosquito comes, there's nothing they can carry to their next source of meal? When you're eliminating malaria, you want to 
to tackle both at the same time. Rather, one of the limitations is that the, the drugs don't provide a very long protective effect. So you have to re, um, repeat the treatment every month or so. It's nowhere near as effective as distributing uh, bed nets because bed nets last for an average three years and they can prevent malaria throughout that period of time. Whilst there's been an upsurge in malaria cases over other infectious diseases in Uganda, it is impressive that the country completed its spraying campaign and is now actively distributing mosquito nets in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Over 220 million insecticidal nets are supposed to be distributed across sub-Saharan Africa this year. However, only a few countries have completed distribution, including Kenya, Benin, as well as Mali. Certainly, the threat of the new mosquitoes invading African cities poses a huge challenge, and public health officials need to move swiftly in implementing all interventions, including surveillance. Florence Blondell, NTV here in London.